This is my preferred method to migrate a site. The first things you're going to need to do are the same things you'll need to do for any site that you're setting up with WordPress. You'll need a place to see it and a database. So um, first I will set up a place to see it. Now what I'm going to describe here is going to be closest to the process of taking it from my local server and putting it on a, a staging server where the client can see it, but the process of doing this is exactly the same if you were taking it from the staging server to the live site. It's the exact same process. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go um, to one of my bajillion domains and create a folder there. And if the site that you're creating already exists, then the process is the same. You just don't have to set up a new, a new location to see it. So in this case, I'll set it up right here with Jotwell Demo. And I'll go ahead and go into my cPanel and set up a database for this as well. That's not the one I want. Where's mine? Okay. So I'll go ahead and set up a database for it. You can set up a new user if you want to. You don't have to. I'm probably going to for this demo so that you can actually see what that um, is like and so also that I don't have to end up hunting for a password for some other site that I don't remember anymore. Okay, so let's see. I'll do a new database. And then I will do a new user. Good grief. HostGator's being super slow this morning. While I'm waiting, I will go ahead and prep a new document to help me remember what I set up. Okay, go back, create a new user if necessary. You can also use one that already exists. Um, a note here, you can use the same database. Like if, if you are replacing a WordPress site, you can use the same database. You don't have to do a second one. I would generally prefer to do a second one in case something goes wrong because then at least you don't ha you haven't overwritten the old one. So let's see, J. Okay, that's a terrible password. I wouldn't use it for real. I'm using it in this case so that I'll remember it for the next step. But if I was doing this for real, I would either use the its password generator or I'd use LastPass's password generator and come up with a real password. I feel like I should be playing elevator music or something here. Okay, if you are setting up a new user, then you're going to want to assign that user to the database or else you're going to get um, permissions issues. So we'll do that here, theoretically, someday. Okay, so put that user on that database, add it, 
Um, and you don't have to do all the privileges. I like to do alter, drop, index, select, create, delete, insert, and update. It's up to you. I, it's theoretically a tiny bit more secure to only give the specific permissions, but honestly I'm not convinced that any of the permissions that we're leaving out really give that much more access. Okay, actually I'm going to just skip away from this because it'll do its thing in the background. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, okay, so this is the site that I'm going to demo moving over. So what we'll do is we'll go to the dashboard. And the thing that you'll want to do, come on, computer, click. The thing that you'll want to do here is prep this um, so that it's as close to what you want in the end as possible. So um, if you've been using this as a staging thing, you may have a bunch of dummy posts. You might have um, a bunch of users that you don't need. So this would be a great time to clean those up, to remove any plugins you're not using. Basically, just get this as clean and lean as you can before you, uh, before you swap it. But that's totally your call. So I would do that at this point um, if there are things that need cleaning. So then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go and install a new plugin called Duplicator. This plugin is the bomb. The reason that it's the bomb is that it will take this URL and change it in every place that it appears. So that means if you have widgets in your sidebar that reference images that are on your server, um, if you have the links to the posts themselves, if you have linked anything within your site to, to this address, it will switch that to the new one instead. And it does it in such a way that you're not going to end up with a bunch of errors. Because I've tried doing that kind of manually, and it's harder than you would think. Okay, so then you'll go ahead and activate it. And then, once it's active, we can actually use it. I'm going to ignore that for right now. Let's see, duplicator. So you can just click duplicator, or you can click packages. There are some more settings, but I've never needed anything beyond this. So what you'll do is you can either push the button here or push the button here at the same button. And that tells it to create a package. You can name it something more specific than this if you think you're going to be versioning this or need any kind of um, more specific information. In this case, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. Um, this warning here is accurate. It might take a while, so you might want to go off and do something else. If it doesn't finish in the next couple seconds here, I'm going to pause the video so as not to make you wait indefinitely through this. It actually almost finished just when I pushed pause, naturally. So what it will do is it will give you two things, um, and it says here, download both. That's what you want to do. So these two things are um, two separate sets of files and I'll tell you, I'll download them and then tell you a little bit about what they each do. So the package is what contains your database, your files, all of the big stuff. The installer is just a PHP file that tells the server to unzip this file to do the magic things that it does with it in terms of putting things in the right place and all that. So this needs to be a PHP file so that your server actually knows what to do with it. Um, and then this is a zip to make it um, all one file, which is nice, and to make it um, so that it's a little bit smaller too. So I'm going to show them Finder. Um, your process might be different. The, the point here is you need to find these on your hard drive so that you can upload them. Okay, so I have them right here. So I'm going to select these, upload them via FTP to the server. It's going to take just a little while, um, maybe a long while. <laughs> then, like everything else, this is going to depend on how big the site is that you're uploading, how many images. This is actually a copy of a live site, so it's it's got a substantial number of posts and images and stuff that are already in it. So, um, it's larger than it probably would be if I was doing what I most often do, which is just demoing a new theme for a new site, where it's only got a handful of posts, a handful of 
pictures just enough to show the theme. So um, it takes a little bit longer, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'll pause it here for the next 20 seconds. Okay, it is uploaded. So now what we do is you'll go to the location and then installer.php. So in this case, Moxie School, assuming I can remember all my stuff here. Again, this is taking a while because it's on HostGator. If it was on a like a decent host, this wouldn't take quite so long, but I don't pay for a decent host for my test stuff. Okay. Um, HostGator freaked out, so I decided to put this on another thing. So, anyways, finally gotten to my location which has changed slightly since the beginning of this video but all the rest of the info should be the same so that's not quite it is it so you'll put in the user the password and the database name notice that these are in slightly different order than WordPress asks for them um, so then what you'll do is you'll test the connection to make sure that it actually works and it should say connection successful. If it doesn't, then check all the usual suspects that you are on the right server, that you have the right host name, that you've got um, a database that exists, that you have a database with a user that has permissions on that database, etc. So, I mean, they've got a lot of those things listed there. But anyways, we're good to go. Then you have to read all warnings and notices because this thing can do some stuff. So you might want to read through these. Um, I am comfortable with them. The whole connecting to an existing database it is going to delete everything. Keep that in mind. Okay, so then it's going to do all its magic unzipping and distributing files and importing database and blah, blah, blah. So as it says, it might take several minutes. That seems reasonable. Okay, and once it's done, you will have um, some settings to check over. So these are the old settings, and these are the new settings. So it's going to grab these things by default. I mean, I'm pretty sure it gets this out of the database, um, the path. So it, these things, should it should already know these. Um, the URL, it's getting from the fact that that's where this installer is running. It's getting the path off of your file system, and it's getting the title out of the database from what it was before. So you can change any of these things if you want. You can add a new admin account. Um, you might want to do that if for some reason somebody else provided you these files but you didn't know the login information. But it's all fairly straightforward here. So it's now doing the data replacement where it's replacing those old values with the new ones and making it beautiful. And then you see it has your important final steps. Resave your permalinks. This is a good thing to do because otherwise your permalinks won't work. So um, I'm going to copy out my password because honestly I don't remember what it is for this site. So let's see, Zotwell, Zotwell, Jotwell, Zeta. Okay, so I'm going to copy my password. So Lewis. Oh, and now apparently there's an issue with um, total cache, but that's because total. Tell them I said that. So actually what I will do, if you have issues like this, you can just, um, what I like to do is I like to quarantine, let's see here, there's nothing magic about this keyword, it just lets me remember what it was. Um, I'm going to quarantine that plugin because there's no need to actually use it. This will keep it from loading and being grumpy. Reload the page. Oh, this is like the worst demo ever. Okay. Let's see. Please reinstall plugin or remove blah, blah, blah. Of course, this doesn't usually happen, but you know, the usual. Okay, WP content object cache. 
pointing that too here. Okay, so good enough for who it's for. Let's see if this is correct. I'm not sure if that's the right info or not. Nope, okay. Uh, okay, let me grab the password again. Sorry this video is so long and like rambly, but this is real life, friends. Okay. There we go. Fabulous. So um, normally I would save this. I'm not going to save it right now because I'm about to kill this site when this demo is over. So then you save your changes and the settings should then work properly. We go back here. Um, delete installer files. Test entire site. So test entire site is not um, exactly a uh, setting. It just means it's a reminder. So. Um, I'm going to look at this because I'm curious what those errors were. Okay. So I'm looking through these to see if there's anything that really jumps out at me. I don't really think these are problems. So those all look okay. Um, let's see, general warnings. Okay, this is normal for my sites. Media settings. Okay, so that's an interesting point here is that there are upload paths already set so we should check those that's a good thing to do and um, one thing you may or may not have noticed me doing is deleting the installer files that's definitely something you want to do you don't want these sitting around where somebody could could come across them with your password info and all that um, let's see what did it say we should check oh yeah media settings okay so Okay, so actually I think this is um, inaccurate, so I would go ahead and change this, and presumably you know what you're doing in terms of getting the current path, but um, something to check. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, the other thing is just testing the site and making sure that it still appears to work and look right. The fact that the back end looks right is a good sign, though. This is like an anti-advertisement for HostGator. Okay, so it looks um, looks pretty good. I would, you know, check it thoroughly as you normally would, but um, but it looks like we are in the right general area. So I think we're good to go. Hopefully, that was helpful.